Music Awards, Mr. Kenny Rogers, Miss Donna Fargo, and Miss Barbara Mandrell. Thank you very much and good evening and welcome to 90 Minutes of the most exciting country music and country stars you will ever hear in your life. And my co-host tonight, Donna Fargo, Barbara Mandrell and I are going to do everything we can. We're going to do everything we can to make this an exciting, entertaining evening for you. It's going to be easy to make this an exciting evening, too, because not only do we have some of the biggest stars in country music here tonight, but also some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. And, of course, we're all here to honor the singers, writers, producers, musicians, and record companies that have all worked so very hard together this past year to make it the biggest year ever in country music. And all of you have seen an awards show, right? I have. I saw right. it. And how many of you heard all that stuff about counting the ballots and how they kept secret? I heard that. You heard that? Okay. Well, good, because the members of the Academy have cast their ballots, and the firm of Dwight V. Call have counted the votes, and the results are in the envelopes off stage. So let's get with it, okay? All right. All right. I think they're ready. I do, too. To present the award for the biggest single record for the past 12 months, it's a great pleasure to welcome one of the true legends of country music, and with him, one of Hollywood's newest stars. She's uh, played a little lady of the night and is now one of the young pioneers. Would you welcome Mr. Ray Price and Miss Linda Perk? It's a very special treat for me to be here this evening, Ray, with you, because of the show I'm doing, Young Pioneers. It takes place in a time when country music was much more than just entertainment. It was a means of education and keeping family records intact, and most important, for the good times. You know about the good times, don't you, Ray? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, darling, those good times have made it awful good for this old country boy. And, of course, if we'd have something as pretty as you back then, I'd have probably been singing for the great time. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> All the songs nominated for top single record this year are just great. We'd like to announce them and find out who the winner is going to be. Well, I'll tell you what, that's fair enough. The nominees for the top single record are Blue Bayou by Linda Ronstead and Asylum Records, produced by Peter Asher. Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue by Crystal Gale on United Artists Records, produced by Larry Butler. Lucille by Kenny Rogers on United Artists, produced by Larry Butler. Lukenbach, Texas by Waylon Jennings on RCA Records, produced by Chips Mammon. You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone on Warner Bur Curb Records, produced by Joe Brooks. Is. I'll tell you what, Linda, how about you tell me the winner? Uh, okay. The single record of the year is Lucille by Kenny Rogers. Produced by Larry Butler on United Artists Records. We're accepting for United Artists. It's Jerry Siebel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate this award. It's very nice to be involved in a business that you truly love, and I love country music and cutting records, and I love Kenny Rogers, and thank you very much. I appreciate it. What a hell of a year. Thank you very much. Next to new male vocalist, and in the... Uh past many years, the guys that have won this, I think, have proven that the Academy has voted very wisely, don't you? Okay, right. Kenny, in 72, the award went to Johnny Rodriguez. In 74, it went to Mickey Gilly. And in 1975, the winner was Freddie Fender. Now, that sure proves something. Right. Not sure what, but... Pro proves a man. <laughs> Proves a man will win it every year, doesn't it? Good, for the male vocalist, it should. <laughs> and to present the award this year is a father-daughter team who prove there is no generation gap and also make beautiful music together. Ladies and gentlemen, this year's Grammy winners, Jeannie and Royce, the Kendalls. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. 
You know, a lot of people ask me about uh, how it is working with my dad, and uh, I'd like to say right here on television that uh, he's really patient and understanding, and uh, he's sweet and loving, too. <laughs> But he makes me crazy when he still expects me to be in by 12. Oh, come on now. You know I let you stay out later than that, sometimes even 12.30. And besides, I grew up with curfews. There's nothing wrong with coming in early when you got singing and picking to do. Well, I don't know. Let's, let's do a little picking for the best new male vocalist. The nominees are Bobby Borchers. Howdy, Glenn. Vern Gosden. Mel McDaniel. It's making me nervous. <laughs> Eddie Rabbit. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the first award like this I've ever gotten. I'd like to thank a few people. I'd like to thank uh, my producer, David Malloy. Thank you, David. I'd like to thank the people at Electric Records who've been very good to me and believed for me in the, in the beginning. And my managers, the Scotty Brothers and Stan Morris. And I'm very proud of this. Thank you. Pretty ladies in country music have been together ever since Patsy Montana was a cowboy sweetheart. And it is my pleasure to introduce, introduce to you one of the most talented, beautiful ladies I've ever met. She sings, she dances, she plays enough instruments to be Johnny Cash's entire backup band. Would you help me welcome Miss Barbara Mandrell? is that son of a guitar playing tobacco farmer, country music's ambassador, Mr. Roy Clark. Well, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Each year, the board of the Academy honors the individual who has done more in the past year to promote and enhance the image of country music. This year, we salute a man who has brought more country music to more people throughout the world than anyone. He melted the Iron Curtain with the first country music show to appear in the Soviet Union, and he's the founder of the annual Inter International Music Festival in Tulsa. And in the past year, he has booked more country music into England, France, Germany, Spain, and Mexico than almost anyone. He didn't jump on the country bandwagon within the past few years because he's been doing it, doing his thing for nearly 30 years, and nobody does it better. It's a pleasure and a personal thrill for me to present the Jim Reeves Memorial Award to my friend, Jim Halsey. I should have worn a tie, I guess. <laughs> I guess I'm the recipient of an award here, really, that I have to share with uh, my associates in the company. I get all the credit, but the associates do all the hard work. And in, uh, in particular, Diana Pugh and Dick Howard and John Hitt, who have helped me build the company. And particularly my real close friends and associates, Mr. Hank Thompson and Roy Clark. I want to... Thank you, thank you, Jim. I have to ask you a little question here. Okay. What do uh, a unicyclist and a couple who had a hit that was banned from some radio stations have in common? <laughs> well, I can't imagine unless they happen to be our next presenters of the album of the year. You guessed that right. Now, let me just explain the unicyclist part of this. I hope you You would. see, she was a unicyclist, and actually, uh, she rode this unicycle in a circus act with her family. And one time, they played in Arabia, mm -hmm. and there was this handsome prince that wanted to buy her for his harem, of mm -hmm. all things. And her daddy said no, and she was very glad because... Uh, you can't ride a unicycle in the sand. <laughs> Here's Zella Lair and the top, the CMA top vocal duo of the year, Jim Ed Brown and Helen Cornelius. <laughs> Zella Juliana. It sure is, Jim. It's Zella, Ina, Cecilia, Georgina, Lear. But I have a personal question I'd like to ask you two. Okay. About that song that you did that everybody was talking about. You must be talking about I Don't Want to Have to Marry You. Uh huh. That's the song that put us together and we're so proud of it. Thank you. It's often nice, you know, whenever you record a song like that, and uh, people still go out and buy the records. They sure do, just like they did with these albums, nominated Best of the Year. The nominees are Conway's Greatest Hits, Conway Twitty on MCA Records, produced by Owen Bradley. And here you come again, Dolly Parton, RCA Records, produced by Gary Fine. by Kenny Rogers, United Artists Records, produced by Larry Butler. And Moody Blue, Elvis Presley, RCA Records, produced by Felton Jarvis. Mm -hmm. right. And Old Waylon by Waylon Jennings, <laughs> on RCA Records, produced by Chip Smoman. And, and the winner Ooh. is... <laughs> You want me to open it? it? Yeah, I'm too nervous. <clears throat> we like the way you talk. All right. How long can I keep everybody in suspense? Oh. Hurry. Not, Not too, too long. long. The album of the year is right. Kenny Rogers by Kenny Rogers, produced by Larry Butler on United Artists Records. Accepting for United Artists is Jerry Siebel. Thank you very much. I'm really glad that I won this particular award because uh, on one of the other award shows, I won an award and failed to mention Larry <coughs> Butler. And uh, 
since then it has somewhat strained our relationship. So I am, de <laughs> I am determined that he's oh, going back in the studio with me one more time. <laughs> this is really exciting for me. And, and uh, the other, again, we've won other awards. I think when people first came to my house, they were very impressed until they realized it was all for the same song. But, uh, <laughs> I think, I assure you. Your mother wrote it. Mother. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Artie Mogul for the freedom to uh, do what we've done with Kenny and with our other artists. Larry for the creativity, Kenny for the talent. Probably one of the finest field staffs in the country at UA. And a special thank you to two people who make me look very good, Hilton Hawkins and Jerry McDowell, my, my country people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the board for the Academy of Country Music, Mr. Ron Martin. Thank you. During the last year, country music has lost several of its key contributors. And while we'll miss all of them, most of us will remember and will miss Elvis the most. Because in some way, all of us were touched by his life and his death. One of his biggest fans wrote a tribute to his memory in the way she does it best. Ladies and gentlemen, with her tribute to Elvis Presley, here is Miss Donna Fargo. Presented a part of us that we weren't sure of, that we dreamed of being. You made us aware of our own potential, even though we knew we might never find the secret in ourselves for reaching it as you did. But you showed us it could be done, and so excluded yourself from society to, to preserve the mystery that made you that American dream. I guess that's why we put you on a pedestal so high that you could do no wrong. We didn't want you to be subject to human ills as we were. We didn't want to know you any better than we did. We wanted you to be perfect. And telling us something that spoiled our image of you would be worse than finding out for the first time there was no Santa Claus. But now the call has come. Fate says your time is up. And we can't believe you're gone. 
It seems like the world ought to stop moving, that life shouldn't go on. But it does, and we will, till our time comes. And that's reality, I guess, reminding us of our own unimportance. That life is here, life is gone, just like that. Even for those who seemingly have everything. And so a part of us has died with you. But the monument we leave to you is not made of stone, but of love. It's a big empty space in our hearts that was reserved for only you, that no one else can ever feel. Once was once a memory is now a dream. What was once a reality is now a dream. But the impact you had on our world will last until the last life you touched is gone. Wish you're gonna miss you, and nobody will ever take your place. Between our next two presenters, they have a lot of groups going vocal over them. <laughs> and uh, she's a Grammy winner with great looks and can make anybody's brown eyes turn blue, I assure you. Yes, and, and they're wondering who it is. And his blue eyes and rugged outdoor roles have made him one of the most popular stars of today. And here they are, country's Crystal Gale, Hollywood's Jan Michael Vincent. This is great uh, being able to nominate with you tonight. This is super. I didn't know you were into country music. Honey, I was born country. <laughs> I've got a lot of good friends that are, uh, or, or maybe a few good friends, that are uh, country artists and performers. And a couple of them are nominated tonight. Uh, what's it feel like being nominated? Well, it's an honor, but I also get very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I bet some of those other people that are nominated are nervous for the top vocal group, so why don't we get into it and let them uh, get off of it? Okay. All right. The nominees are Asleep at the Wheel. Conway and Loretta. Dave and Sugar. Statler Brothers. Oak Ridge Boys. And the winner is, let's see. The top vocal group is the Statler Brothers. Accepting for the Statler Brothers is Frank Leffel of Mercury Records. Half of the Statler brothers who couldn't be here tonight, I'd really like to say thank you, and thank you for Mercury Records. Have you ever heard of Country Politan? Yeah, it's a Dodge station wagon with a brick fireplace <laughs> in the back. Oh, that's not funny now, guys. No, it is not. It's, it's a kind of music attributed to our next super singer who really got his start as a rock and roller. Well, and just to prove that those people were wrong when they kept saying that he ain't country anymore, we're going to have him sing the five songs nominated for Song of the Year. Yes, and fellas, you better hang on to your ladies right now because here is the silver fox himself, uh -oh. Charlie Rich! Two things in life that make it worth living is guitars too good and firm feeling women. I don't need my name in the marquee lights. I got my son and I got you. 
That's not easy to sing everybody else's songs like that. And uh, speaking of singing everyone else's songs, I would like to uh, just take a second and tell you what a great job you did on the Elvis tribute. I thought that was beautiful. I'd like to say thank you for all of it. careers, many of us take different routes, and our next two uh, presenters are perfect examples of that. He started out as a singer, became a dramatic star, and returned to singing. Now, that may sound roundabout, but when you got soul, babe, it has a way of working out. <laughs> <laughs> and she went from picking cotton uh, on her family's farm to arranging symphony orchestras and wow. singing duets with a very dashing bearded dude. Of course. <laughs> present the award for song of the year here's the country sunshine girl Dottie West and television and music David Soul yes. I got myself a lady did he call me a cotton pick? No, he called you a sunshine. That's girl. not on the screen. But David, <laughs> you know, in country music, we've had our singing cowboys like yeah. Roy Rogers and Gene Autry and our friend Willie Nelson. Now, Willie somebody, Nelson's not a cowboy. Well, he wears tennis shoes. He's yeah, another kind of cowboy. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I don't think we'll get you to sing, right? Uh, uh, not now, no. No, you're no, not ready to sing. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Are you oh, gonna, no. You're not going to be a singing cop. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't think Hutch could carry a tune, frankly. <laughs> but uh, but well, David's into music and uh, songwriting, and, and, and as you are. You've got over 400 songs all in one afternoon. That I've know. written, but I'm, I'm here to say that they have not all been recorded, and we still have some of them available. Well, I'd love to hear it when they are. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and that's why this particular award is a very special award. Uh, it's for the song of the year. And let's move right on to that, huh? All right, let's, let's do, do it. I the nominees are context here. <laughs> Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue by Crystal Gale Composed by R. Lee Published by United Artists From Graceland to Promised Land, Merle Haggard Composed by Merle Haggard Published by Shade Tree I like this one yeah. Lucille by Kenny Rogers Composed by Roger Bowling and Hal Byron, published by Andi Invasion Music. <laughs> Luckenbach, Texas. Will and Jennings. Composed by Bobby Emmons and Chip Smolman, published by Baby Chick. You Light Up My Life by Debbie Boone, composed by Joe Brooks, published by Big Hill. And, and the to... winner is. That's right. We'll take bets. <laughs> Lucille by Kenny Rogers. Written by Roger Bowling and Hal Bynum. Published by Andite Invasion and ATV News. Composer and the publisher, Hal Bynum and Cliffy Stone. Let's never mention this song without mentioning Roger Bowling. What a great writer. It's true. What a great writer. Okay, and I'm accepting for one for Roger Bowling and one for ATV Music, and uh, we really appreciate the votes of the Academy. Thank you very much. And for my part, I would like to, uh, again, take just a second to thank Artie Mogul from United Artists Records, Larry Butler, and my manager, Ken Gregan, and everybody else who's helped. I got you in this time, Larry. Everybody who's helped make this possible. It's been a hell of a year. Thank you very much. gentlemen, the raging Cajun, Doug Kershaw. Yeah.
on Texas Trio. Hank Thompson, George Jones, and Jackie Ward. Yeah. I see that George showed up for this one. <laughs> well, I'm oh, gonna, I'm one of the rare gonna, things, huh? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, son, I usually make all of my dates. If they just give me my money, I would make them all. I <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's get it. The nominees for Best New Female Vocalist are Debbie Boone, <laughs> Helen Cornelius. All right. And uh, how about uh, Janie Frick? Stella Parker. And Mary Lou Turner. <laughs> okay, all right. And the winner is. I'm just damn coming out who this is. Let George. me see, let me see. George, it's, if you got your glasses. It's got to be Tammy Wynette. <laughs> How about Davy Boone? All yeah. right. Her sister, Mindy Boone Carmen. Thank you. I'm so happy for her. Debbie wants me to express her thanks to, first of all, Mike Curb for uh, believing in her from the beginning and also for suggesting that she record that record. To Warner Brothers Records, to Joe Brooks for writing a song that crossed all the boundaries, and to all you country fans for honoring Red Foley's granddaughter this way. Thank you. With a good looking woman, then just get out of my way. Show me the jukebox, I'll tell you what song you should play. Now, sooner or later, a few shots of bourbon, I'll think of something to say. Oh, I can take her or leave her, but I like to take her away. They say, fuzzy face fellows do it better who goes that line. <laughs> well, not always true.
true, Donna, because take, for example, the rugged, clean-shaven fellow who's about to make an appearance out here right now. He's one of TV's biggest stars, and yet he's never owned a whisker for longer than a day. His presenting partner is a beautiful combination of Hollywood and country, and she's equally at home on Sugar Time or Hee Haw. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, two of country music's biggest supporters, would you please make welcome Miss Barbie Benton and Mr. Claude Akins. Yay! Claude, you've really done a lot for country music with all of your television shows. Well, I think there's a little country music in all of us. Look at uh, Burt Reynolds, Clint Eastwood, Jan Michael Vinson, who was here, a lot of others. You know, uh, you've done a lot for country too, Bobby. You're not only singing pretty, but you're just downright fun to watch. <laughs> Shucks, this is becoming a mutual admiration society. <laughs> I think it's time we start admiring those men who were nominated for Best Male Vocalist of the Year. Just when I finally get you alone, you want to invite a crowd, huh? <laughs> That's the way it is. Okay, the nominees are Mickey Gilly. Ronnie Milsap. Kenny Rogers. Twitty. And Melt Jit 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 The winner is. Guess who? Kenny Rogers! Thank you very much. I don't know. It's uh, it really is exciting. I know that, that it may not seem like it, but it's it it really means something. Each one has its own special meaning, and I would particularly like to say thanks to my wife Marianne for sticking by me through all of this. Thank you very much. It's been a great year. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Academy of Country Music, Mr. Cliffy Stone. Thank you very much. In 1933, departing the Rocky Mountains and heading for the California coast, a newly formed group called the Pioneer Trio began a country legend. The group was comprised of Leonard Sly, who was later to be known as Roy Rogers, Tim Spencer, and Bob Nolan, who would go on to compose over a thousand songs and most of them hits. In 1936, they joined Bing Crosby in the first of many motion pictures. With their new name and movies as a stepping stone, they have become a tradition that lives on today. The recipient of this year's Pioneer Tribute is the Sons of the Pioneers. Please welcome the leader, Mr. Dale Warren. plaque and I, I guess you all can't see it but it's got all the all this different sons of the pioneers name on it right up to present right up to Rome Johnson who was the newest oh that's wonderful and I know that it's a real honor for me to accept this award for all the members of the sons of the pioneers and I would like to say that the ones that really laid down the foundation so that we can still carry on today are Roy Rogers Tim Spencer and Bob Nolan. You bet. For the wonderful songs, Hugh and Carl Farr, Pat Brady, and I can't forget my good buddy that I worked with for 26 years, Mr. Lloyd Perryman. You bet. Thank you, Dale. And this is yours. Mr. Freddie Fender. Talk to me, talk to me.
Vocalist of the Year. Here are Hervé Villachese and Dennis Dugan. Yeah. I'm very excited to have been chosen to present this award to the top female country music. Yeah, me too. I, I, I wonder why they picked us. Hmm. I think it's because we are tall, handsome, and uh, viril. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're probably right about that. I hadn't thought of it that way. Uh, by the way, what kind of girls do you like best? Well, I like a uh, tall girl with a lot of... And... <laughs> I think I better not say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it sounds to me like you would have described the uh, five ladies who are nominated for Female Vocalist of the Year. So let's introduce them. Okay. The first nominate is Crystal Gell. Emmy Lou Harris. And Loretta Lynn. Dolly Parton. Female vocalist. Crystal Gale. so great. I love it. Uh, I want to thank my record company, United Artists, as they've been so great throughout my career. And my producer, Alan Reynolds. Thank you. And now, here to share some of the good old family tradition is Miss Stella Parton. It's true. It's just for little 
you very much, Stella. That really is part of the country's tradition, don't you think? Yeah, and still another part of our country music tradition is that our fans are the best fans in the whole world, right? I believe that. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get number one hits all the time, but we always get a fair shake, and you can't beat that for loyalty. That's true, and that's why this next award is special. It's the Career Achievement Award, and we've got two special people to present it: Mickey Gilley and Doug Kershaw. Yeah. Career achievement. You know all about that, don't you, Mickey? Man, you you were an overnight success. Well, I'll tell you what, overnight, uh, if you're a Rip Van Winkle, it took me about 20 years. I hear you, brother. That's why that the uh, C Career Achievement Award is special. And tonight the nominees are some real heavyweights. Let's start with Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> Roy Arbison. Johnny Paycheck. Dottie West. Yeah. And the winner is. I want to do this all my life. I can't accept this. <laughs> Don't say Doug Kershaw. Wait. <laughs> you read it. Johnny Paycheck! Hey! When uh, John asked me to accept his award, he said, uh, take it and well, you can take this award and thank you all very, very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Eddie Rabbit. Uh-huh. Say goodbye now Till I kissed you One more time And held you As I did When you were mine It'd be like I said I don't still love you I won't be thinking of you Barbara, we've come to the final award of the evening. And this is the real big one. 
This is the award for the Entertainer of the Year, and it honors the person that the members of the Academy have selected as the very best country music has. To present the award are two of Hollywood's biggest country fans. Here's Carter Country's Victor French and Maud's own Adrian Barbo. <laughs> <laughs> You're prettier than a fleet-footed filly frolicking through the green grass of Kentucky. <clears throat> Are you calling me an old nag? <laughs> you got to be joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, Victor, you sure have a, a, a wonderful, smooth way of talking, you son southern gentlemen, you. Well, you see, down south, see, man's got to speak his piece when he gets the urge, don't you see? That, otherwise, some, some Yankee's gonna come down and, and uh, beat you to the draw. Well, there's no way I'm gonna let that happen tonight. You just stick with me and everything will go as smooth as a slick, flat river stone floating on a southern pond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm ready. All right, let's go. <laughs> the nominees for the Entertainer of the Year are... That curly-haired, guitar-playing, banjo-picking superstar, Roy Clark! A coal miner's daughter who now owns a whole town, Loretta Lynn. And that lady who has done for country music what Lana Turner did for the sweater. <laughs> Fill it up! found new success in a bar in Toledo, Kenny Rogers. And the fastest tongue in Western music, Mel Tillis. And the winner is, the entertainer of the year is, Dolly Parton. Except for Dolly, her sister, Stella Parton. expect to come and get this, but poor little thing, I'm glad she finally got something. Thank you. <laughs> well, we seem to be all out of those country music hard hat trophies, and so I guess that's it. But we would like to take a moment to congratulate all the nominees and winners, because without them, country music wouldn't be what it is today. Congratulations, Kenny. Thank yes. you very much. I would like to take... I would like just to take to take just a second and thank the Academy for allowing me to be flanked by two of the most beautiful girls in the world tonight. This has been my pleasure, Aww. I assure you. Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> when the ladies take over the world in a couple of years, we'll remember how nice you were. Well, that's really <laughs> That's right, and what's more, after tonight, I think we'll just have you removed from Gloria Steinem's most wanted list as well. <laughs> Say good night, Barbara. Good night, Barbara. Good night, Donna. Say good night. Good night, Donna. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank everybody. you very much. Los Angeles, California. This has been the 13th Annual Academy of Country Music Awards. This is Bruce Hayes speaking for Country Music. This is David Hart. Tomorrow in Good Morning America, Farrah Fawcett majors with Rona at Pam, and Housewives fire questions at the President's top inflation fighter. Tomorrow on Good Morning America. And tomorrow, late-night action and suspense, Claude Aiken stars as a tough cop fighting the battle of his life with the bottle on Police Story. Followed by a midsummer nightmare on the Wednesday Mystery of the Week. That's tomorrow on ABC Late Night. Stack up the band, then race the blues. 
His was the voice heard by more people than that of any other human being who ever lived. Hear that beat played from midnight till morn, till the day that the rhythm was born. When the South met the man with the horn, I was glad. Join the marching crowd. In some parts of the globe, he was known as El Bingo. In others, Der Bingo, or Le Bing. To his countrymen, he was, with long familiarity, simply Bing, described by a poet as perennial as spring. When a meadow lark appears Aren't you glad you got to it? Some remember him most fondly in his famous role as Father O'Malley. Aren't you glad you're you? Well, you see what I got lined up for you, boy. What is it, a dame? What else would I line up for you? What's wrong with her? Oh, she's a doll. Oh, she's really? a bell. Yeah. Cut it down to two encores. Okay. Let's move. For others, the pleasure in the zany company of Hope and Crosby on the road. In a unique career spanning half a century, the remarkable naturalness and easy charm of Bing Crosby endeared him to the world. People say, well, somebody is the Heifetz of broadcasting or somebody is the Rolls Royce of... Uh, performers or somebody as the uh, incredible essence of professionalism and Bing was all of that they'd ask me who is the best who is the best dancer of all your partners so I would always get out of it by saying Bing Crosby <laughs> through his recordings and his movies I became a singer I copied his style of singing. I tried to copy his acting. In fact, about everything he did, I tried to do. Because, you know, he was a fine actor, as he proved in Going My Way, where he played a priest. Of course, I always kidded him about that, because how could a man with that many kids play a priest? I mean, you really have to be a fine actor for that. He looked into my eyes and sang to me. I mean, it was lovely. and. Because I think most times when you do a duet, people don't really look at you, they look to the side. He made you so easy. He was so easy. I, I learned something from Bing. Bing was never late for anything. And they'd say, you're on, and he would be chewing gum. Because that kept his um, mouth from getting dry or whatever. And he, I'd see him put over there, and he'd stash it away and go right on singing <laughs> with his mouth. But you had gum in his mouth, but no one ever knew it. Oh, and we had marvelous times. Bing had a way of creating an ease and good humor with everyone around him. It's true he wasn't um, very demonstrative with friends or people he loved, but you knew if, when he did like you. I, I sometimes uh, feel that he, he would have liked to have been able to be more demonstrative than he was. I think that was, that was a thing that, uh, that bothered him. He, he, he really was kind of withdrawn as far as touching or hugging or, or any of that went. He had difficulty expressing love um, so that when he would take you walking and hold your hand, it was a terribly precious moment and uh, valued as such, you know, because the love was expressed but not in a very physical way. And when it was expressed physically, it was so precious. Uh, for me, he was unique in the sense Director that... Director uh, Frank Capra. I, I thought he was the, the voice of America. It would be one way of putting it. The song of America. The, 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 the songs for America, about America. The breeze runs In the songs of Bing Crosby, the hopes and dreams of the American people found expression. While he himself became the living embodiment of America, 
His voice, warm and reassuring, became for millions the sound of America. And on that way through the rose that you The ones I used to know. In his last Christmas special, televised a few weeks after his death, Bing Crosby sang White Christmas for the last time. And children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. Thirty-five years before, Bing sang it first to a world darkened by war. It was to become the most popular of his songs. His recording of it, the best-selling record ever. And over the years, it seemed Bing was always there to wish us all a white Christmas. And bright. And may all your Christmas be One of the best loved entertainers of all time, Crosby deprecatingly called himself the Groaner. I'm successful, he said, because every man who sees or hears me believes he sings as well as I do, especially in the shower. Just call me lucky, he said. It was many years before that young Harry Lillis Crosby of Spokane, Washington, was first called Bing, after a character in his favorite comic strip. His earliest interest is sports. So wrap your troubles in dreams. At Gonzaga High, he dreams of becoming an athlete. He's the fourth of seven children and must work after school, sometimes helping out at the brewery where his father's a bookkeeper. In 1920, at the age of 17, Bing enters Gonzaga University to study law under the Jesuit fathers who were to be a strong influence in his life. He joins the Glee Club and plays varsity baseball. Sports is still his major interest when a fellow student, Al Rinker, invites him to join the Musical Aiders. They're a hot new group, although not one of the boys can read a note of music. They perform at high school dances, private parties, and eventually in movie theaters with Bing on the drums. Weren't you king for a dance? Now Bing becomes obsessed by show business. By his fourth year at Gonzaga, he's working afternoons for a law firm, but finds it more gratifying and more lucrative playing and singing with Rinker's band at night. He decides to drop out of college, and with Al Rinker, prepares to set out for Los Angeles to seek his musical fortune. I suggested that we go down and see my sister, Mildred Bailey, in Los Angeles. Al Rinker. And uh, just to drive down, because I didn't tell her we were coming. So he agreed, so we got into this old Model T Ford, 1916 Model T, oh, you should see it, no top on it. It was the band, band car. And he put his, threw his drums in the back seat, and we said goodbye to our parents. And we drove off into the west toward Seattle, went to Seattle, drove over there, and uh, cleared down to Los Angeles. My with the help of Mildred Bailey, the boys get their first bookings. Billed as two boys and a piano, they come to the attention of Paul Whiteman, who signs them up to tour with his band as a singing novelty duo. Whiteman's the biggest name in pop music. The kids from Spokane seem to be on their way. 
We were doubling at the Paul Wattin Club, which is a big club at the time. And it was a very big club. People were drinking and eating, and Bing and I sang to the tables, you see. But we were very intimate. There's no microphones in those days. And uh, they couldn't hear us. They took us off the bill. And we said, oh, what's going to happen to us? He's going to send us back home, which I don't know what he was going to do. But one of the fellas uh, knew a fellow called Harry Barris, who was doing a single. And he was doing jazz things. He slammed a panel. So he got us, uh, Bing and I, together with Harry Barris. And we rehearsed a couple tunes. Uh, like uh, Mississippi Mud, a couple other ones, and uh, we had two little pianos of Whiteman got us, and we slammed them. They could hear us now, and that's how the Rhythm Boys were started, and we started making records. We were more or less formed a, a following, a little bit in our time, like the Beatles did uh, later on, in, in, in that type of stuff we did, because we copied instruments. We had marvelous fellows with the orchestra, like uh, Big Spider Beck, Eddie Lang, Joe Venuti, uh, Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey, Red Nichols. My sister, Melda Bailey, was in the band by that time, and we really had quite an outfit. Whenever the swell low down in big town, low down there's no, low down lower than there, you may believe. Between engagements, Bing makes a solo, unbilled appearance in a movie called Reaching for the Moon. So you can lay your dough down when they go. In the same year, 1930, the Rhythm Boys are set to do a film with Whiteman when Bing runs into trouble, Al Rinker. While we were starting to make the picture, he was out one night. I guess he had a few drinks too many and he had a girl with him. And he ran, evidently ran into a, a telephone pole with a car. Well, the cops 